All right, <laughs> we're going to try this a third time. Welcome back, episode 163 of Chaotically Intolerant. Uh, today, we are going to be covering the NFL schedule release. It's going to be a quick episode, probably about 30 minutes, a uh, real compact episode. It's a busy week. This is going to be the final episode um, before the 2024 season of the Chaotically Intolerant Table Tennis League. We're going to be um, taking a break, about a six-week break. We're going to be back on June 26th. So how things are going to go now it's going to be Wednesday episode releases just because I found that the two two times a week, it's just a little too much content. Um, so just going to once a week is is pretty good. Um, and, you know, I, I want to be able to divert or to put all of my time onto the Table Tennis League until that ends on the 26th or on the 23rd. I'm sorry, June 23rd. Um, so, again, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Um, this will be the final week or episode for the next six weeks. And let's go. All right, so the NFL has done their thing that they usually do all every year. They make a whole spectacle out of something that could just be a press release, but the schedule is out. The NFL has released the entire 2024 slate, and I'm already seeing too much primetime Jets, in my opinion. I'm seeing way too much primetime Jets. We have two Sunday night football games with the Jets, which, I mean, I, I don't ever really want to see the Jets in any Sunday night and any primetime game until they actually prove that they're going to win some important football games. What, what are you thinking, Mike? Well, I'm not a fan of Wednesday football, even if it's Christmas. I'm not a fan of seeing the Jets. I'm glad they put the Bears in a week two primetime game. I thought that was a nice touch against Houston. So Caleb Williams mm -hmm. versus CJ Stroud should be fun. You're right. Total spectacle. You know, just a few years ago, there would not have been any leaks of any kind and the teased any games it's just you're right press release schedules out and that's that why the nfl has to be in the news every day don't they they do they they absolutely love it i mean the draft you know the draft used to be two days and now it's four and it's like what was it two hundred thousand people were at the draft this year or something insane like that i mean they they got to make sure they make their they hit their news quota i guess I think the Jets have three primetime games, maybe four. Let me look up the Thursday night football schedule. Yeah, they, they play the Patriots on a Thursday night in like week three, I think. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we're getting our fill of Aaron Rodgers and the Jets. Well, we don't even know if it'll be Aaron Rodgers. Will he make it to week three? They have, they have a week three matchup against the Patriots. They have a week four matchup against the Dallas Cowboys. They have a week nine matchup against the Houston Texans. All on Thursday Night Football, which hilariously enough, Thursday Night Football is the, the one, it's, it's like the worst of, of the three big primetime slates. So well, it, yeah, the they, fact that they get that. I don't think they play the, they don't play the uh, Cowboys. I think that was the Giants week four, plays the Cowboys. Oh, maybe CBS got that wrong because I, I'm seeing Jets Cowboys week four, September 26th. Uh, no, no, that's wrong. And I noticed that, that NFL.com had, uh, the Dallas Cleveland game on CBS, and they just had a release last night that uh, that it's Brady's first Fox game. Yeah, that that is a big deal, of course. I mean, I I did watch the entire roast as well of Tom Brady. I'm gonna be honest, it was it was horrible. Like there were funny parts, obviously. Like there were a lot of funny parts, but a three hour runtime for a roast is way too long. It is way too. I mean, it needs to be a quick ninety minutes, maybe maybe like. 110 but that's it you can't have these guys are and they're all kind of joking around there's a lot of dead air too so it was honestly a quite quite a hard watch but i'm i'm interested to see how brady's gonna do in the booth uh, yeah i mean look troy aikman has been on the air for over 20 years despite me thinking he's kind of a doofus so i'm sure <laughs> if he can do it with all his concussions i'm sure brady will be just fine yeah um the one i've heard some people point out uh he they point out the Joe Montana experiment when Joe Montana tried his hand in the booth, and apparently it did not go that well. Uh, people really did not like Joe Montana. He was really not good. So, curious about that. Also, I'm looking at the preseason schedule on ESPN, at least. Maybe they're just fucking this up. 
I'm only seeing the Colts have one preseason game this year, and they're missing a lot of games for the preseason schedule. So that's – are they taking away preseason games now? No. Uh, I just think ESPN is in overload right now. It could be. It absolutely could be. Uh, but I, I guess let's um, let's start out. So week one. Let's go to week one if I can get over to week one. Here we go. Uh, so Baltimore is kicking off with Kansas City. Uh, you can take it out. It's fine. Baltimore kicking off with Kansas City. I think this is a game that's a lot more important to Baltimore than Kansas City, and I think you would agree. I mean, I, I'm surprised that they went right off the bat, championship game rematch. Uh, I remember Ron Rivera complaining it was too soon when Carolina had to play Denver on the opening Thursday night game after the Super Bowl. And maybe that's how the Ravens feel. Their their last game last year was a loss to the Chiefs, and then their first game this year could be a loss to the Chiefs. And you just feel like if they lose that game, they got 16 more games just to think about how they still haven't beaten the Chiefs. Like, that's a lot of pressure right off the bat. I really, for the life of me, thought they were going to save that game for later in the year and go with Houston. Because, you know, you still have a, a playoff team from a year ago, C.J. Stroud against Mahomes. would have been a great potential shootout. So I was a little surprised and disappointed as a Ravens fan that that's how the season has to start three days earlier than everyone else with a lot of added pressure. And then, so I'm looking through, I'm just looking through week one here. Um, Green Bay, Philly, uh, the, In Brazil. the Brazil game, the Friday yeah. Brazil game, least favorite game, I think of all time already. I hate this game. I hate it too. I hate a lot of things the NFL has done in the last 18, 19 years since Goodell took <laughs> over. I mean, with the new TV deal, it was a lot simpler um, back when Tagliabue was running the show. You know, I, I Green Bay is not – I don't know if Green Bay – they were like the last team that had played a London game up until a few years ago. It was like for some reason they were the last franchise, and now they're the first team, one of the first teams to play a Brazil game. So, yeah. let's. I guess let's go over the international games first. So Your favorite. The – huh? Your favorite, the international games. Yeah, they, they released them early the, today, of course, because that's – what Adam Schefter loves to do. Panthers and Giants, November 10th in Munich. What did Germany do to deserve this? Um, besides besides the last, you know, years of history of Germany being the bad guys, are we still punishing them for, you know, all that stuff back in the mid to early 1900s? Yeah, apparently. You got the Colts and the Patriots last year, the 10-6 to 6 game. Yeah. They... They really do not like Germany. The NFL, the NFL is doing their best to hope that Germany will hate the NFL um, and say never come back because they are sending them some of the worst games possible. This is crazy. New England and Jacksonville, a rematch of that famous 27 AFC title game in London, England. Uh, again, a real stinker. Just a real stinker that they they put up. I I, I lost you there for a second. A real stinker, Patriots and Jags. Um, oh, right. right. Yeah, it's too um, bad. Yeah. Jaguars, Bears, a little better. You have Caleb Williams, kind of mid, mid-season, mid you know, October, early mid-season. Um, and again, the Jags are in London two weeks in a row, which is like normal. Again, I'm curious about how the Bears are going to match up. I'm curious about Caleb Williams. I'm always going to be curious about Caleb Williams this year. Um, yeah, I guess uh, they just don't try. They, they really don't put in. I think that's part of why I hate the London games. It's because they don't put in somewhat of an effort. Like don't don't put your great games there, of course. Like that's that would be stupid to put your great NFL games there. But at least put like a middle of the road game, you know, something. Maybe put a divisional game there, like between two teams that are probably hovering around the same. I mean, why are why are we putting Jacksonville and Chicago, New England and Jacksonville, and New York and Carolina? I mean, those teams just don't even mix. There's no mixing. Those teams seem weird when they play each other. Right. Yeah. I mean, they. I, I don't. Do they do it on a rotational basis, or do they just say who was crappy the year before? Let's just put them out there. I think there's some sort of rotational basis based on who has been there recently. Um, so if I, I don't think they would be putting a team like the Colts over there, um, but they are putting the Pats. So I'm really not sure how they do it, but. Whatever they're doing is probably not right. The same thing, Jets and the Vikings, another one of those weird matchups that 
you feel like you never see the colors just don't really mix all that much the names don't really mix nothing um and then finally green bay and philly which is in brazil we just talked about that but those teams at least mix there is something there little little juice there so um, i don't mind that let's see just give, give me your i guess give me your favorite game so far that that you've been thinking about that's non non ravens in week one or in general just in general um well I'm, i am intrigued in week one to see the rams and the lions instant rematch stafford back in detroit again week one it's kind of like the lions you know uh, was last season a fluke are they for real they just gave goff a big extension right or yeah they up. did but they did yeah and um I think that'll be like a good test. And then the Lions play the Niners. I want to say it's like the second to last week of the year. Maybe It might be the last Monday night game. Um, that was a spot where the Niners got hammered last year by the Ravens. It was the final, I think it was the final or second to last Monday night game of the year. And uh, They are the second to last Monday night game. Yeah, that's a big deal. I think for there Detroit. was one more. I think there was one more Monday night game after last year's ravens hammering because they played on christmas day christmas right. night so i think there was one more after that yeah i think you're right i know detroit played dallas and i don't know if that was like the de facto monday night game because it was a saturday but because hey, new year's or something anyway uh i i'm i'm curious to see if the lions can get their revenge chiefs niners they play again they play each other now uh week seven or eight in san francisco as a fox game um th- those are the ones that really stood out yeah Dallas week seven is going to be against Philly on Monday. I think it's on prime time. I don't know if it's on Monday night or what is the prime time schedule here? I just need to look up. I wonder if they'll just give me a prime time schedule. Here we go. Okay. But it is going to be week 17. That might decide the division right there. Um, That might be a, that's definitely going to be a pivotal game uh, because we know the Cowboys are always going to be involved in the NFC East. I think, I think that's a fair assumption. Yeah. I think so. I think uh, smart of the league not to put their best division games or would be smart in week 18. I hate the all division last week. I used to get excited when the schedule came out just to see what the random matchups were the last week of the season because you used to get some interesting ones that made for some good drama. It was a little bit of roll, I mean, a roll of the dice. And I hate the idea of divisional games in week 18 being meaningless because if you have, if you do schedule a Cowboys Eagles game, let's say, and then one of those teams is clinched. You've wasted as the league. You've wasted a Cowboys Eagles game. So yeah. if you're going to do the whole division thing, at least don't put your best matchups or what you think will be the best matchups in week 18. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to get this, uh, get a lot of this out. Uh, I think, I think Bills at Dolphins is going to be a really fun one week two, especially. You know, I think you're going to get more of a, like neutral field, but the Dolphins are, that means the Dolphins are going to have to go to Buffalo late in the year, which right. I think, I think I can already tell you what's going to happen then. Yeah. Hopefully the, uh, you know, the field isn't like a rock and Tagovailoa hits his head or something, but yeah. I know, and Buffalo, they play the chiefs again and it's late in the year and it's in Buffalo. That's another big deal. You know, another one of those games where if Buffalo loses, I mean, they've beaten the chiefs, they seem to beat them every year in the regular season in Kansas city, no less. And it, yeah. it doesn't end up mattering. Yeah. They're, they're in Buffalo, uh, 11, 17. They're in Buffalo to four twenty five game, which mm. why, why don't they ever give them the, I, I feel like they don't give them the primetime spot. Like that, that has to be the primetime spot. Uh, yeah. I mean, but they played the CBS late window too. Who else? I mean, you look at, Okay, Colts, Colts, Jets is the Sunday night game. Play Kansas City or Buffalo could be. You have Houston and Dallas, which would probably be a pretty good game Monday night. So I, I feel like you definitely. Got, I personally think those the biggest game should be Sunday night football. That should always be the biggest game of the of the week is Sunday night football. I think just NBC, the music, all of it. Um, it breeds a really big environment. It's the bright lights, you know, especially it's a full day of football. Right, you're you're done watching the full day, but you still have the Sunday night game. You want a great game. I mean, listen, as I'm a Colts fan, but 
I don't think anyone wants to see Colts Jets on prime time. They just don't. Aaron Rodgers will have torn his other Achilles by then. Anthony Richardson will probably have been run into the ground by the coaching staff. So it 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 would be Joe Flacco and whoever is the backup in New York. I don't even know who the backup in New York is. I think they signed Tyrod Taylor. Oh, Tyrod Taylor and Joe Flacco. Elite quarterback matchup there. Let's see here. Let me look. Philly and, Philly and the Giants. Uh, I think that's going to be one to watch as well, that season series. Obviously, Saquon going to Philly. His return uh, to New York is going to be a big deal. I don't think there's really going to be much interesting to watch about that season series. But, hey, it, it's it's Philly and New York. They're going to find a way to fight, I think, did the Giants take one from Philly last year? Yeah, the the last game of the season, actually, they did. They kicked the shit out of them, right? I couldn't remember. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. When does Chicago play Green Bay? That's going to be an interesting one because, obviously, we they don't beat them that often, to say the least. Chicago, Houston, week two, week three, which Chicago rematch with the, with the Colts as well um, in the Super Bowl. Oh, so they have two late matchups. Um, Packers come to Chicago, also 11-17. Another one you could have put on Sunday Night Football over Colts Jets. Or uh, they're going to Green Bay on January 5th as well. So, um, yeah. Again, I mean, we can talk all NFL schedule we can. I mean, I don't know if there's much to talk about here. I guess if if we want, we can dive in a little bit into baseball. Talk a little baseball, and then we'll jump off probably in about seven or eight minutes here. You want to do that? Sure. All right. So. The Boston Red Sox can't beat the Rays. Stuff. Um, this Red Sox team should not be losing to the Rays. I just, I really don't think so. Tanner Houck also got snubbed in Cy Young rankings this week. So I think they released like the first Cy Young rankings and he was not top five. Um, Cutter Crawford was, he was number five, which was nice. But still, uh, Tanner Houck did get snubbed there. But the Red Sox are just kind of, I don't know. They're, they're, this is a frustrating team because... You see them and you think they need to go out and get someone. I think the Jazz Chisholm is, is on the going to be on the block. And then Justin Turner is actually someone they could go out and get, get a little extra help, especially with Cassis gone. But they're, they're not going to do anything. They, we just know they're going to they're gonna hang around at 500 and the ownership isn't going to say, hey, maybe, the, maybe we'll go on a run in August and September and get lucky. But who, who could see that happening? I mean, who, realistically, who could see that happening? Yeah, I mean, they were so idle in the off season when it was, um, you know, it was like an opportunity to fix their uh, rotation, and they didn't do that. And and then these guys have overperformed. It just, yeah, it, it feels like they're they're just teetering the whole year. They're just going to be a, a middling team, and that's not going to cut it in that division. Yeah, yeah. Um, now this, so I will say for the last like three bad years, the Red Sox have had. We have said if the Red Sox were in the Central, they would be in third place. They would be fighting for a playoff spot right now if they were in the Central, if they were in the West. Well, now, I'm going to be honest, it's a little more equal. I, I think this Rays team and this Jays team, is they are seriously underperforming. Ex- I think the Rays a little less, but the Jays especially, they're underperforming expectations. Um, so this is kind of your moment where you have to say, okay, like you have to go out and take advantage of when these teams are down and it just doesn't really feel like they're doing that. And you have Baltimore and New York, they're, they're battling it out. They're going to battle it out down the stretch. So you're right there. You've got to fight for that. Like last wild card spot, basically. Right. I mean, the, the Orioles and Yankees clearly are cut above what the Red Sox are. I mean, the American league is a little more open than it's been in previous years. The Astros and the Rangers have had slower starts this year. Uh, you know, the, the central has been surprisingly good. But there's no reason the Red Sox couldn't add if they added an impact player or two. I do believe that they could legitimately compete at least for a wild card spot. And you know, look, we saw last year, we've seen the last couple of years. The, you know, the Diamondbacks were the five seed last year, I think, and the Phillies were the six seed the year before. So this expanded postseason, you just have to get in to have a chance. It's I think you can really equate it more to the NHL. I think than anything the nhl that's you see upsets all the time big upsets and if you just get in the dance right like that's the that's the goal in the nba you know you have the nba playoffs going on right now like it's more often than not the cream is rising to the top like those one two and three are going to the finals you're not seeing a low seed go to the finals paul Skeens makes his debut um yeah 
wild An game. electric debut. Yeah, it was. What a, what a weird game. I mean, that was the game yeah. that featured, what, like six straight run scoring walks or something, or like six and seven batters, and there was a rain delay. And the final score was 10 to nine, but Skeens looked good. I mean, his arm, yeah, obviously, you know what, what the arm is. Question of whether he can yeah. harness it, but a good test uh, against a pretty good Cubs team. He also loves chicken Alfredo, by the way. Hilarious. That's his uh, pre start routine is to eat a big thing of chicken Alfredo. Um, and if you ever if you've ever seen Bull Durham, if, you know, when when you're when you're not in the show, they're gonna call you sloppy. They're gonna call you gross. But when you're in the show and you're doing it, they're gonna call you eccentric, eccentric basically. So I I don't know how what they're calling it right now. I think it's a little more eccentric. Chicken Alfredo is awesome. I love Chicken Alfredo. Yeah. So well, and and the Pirates they need something to really. I mean, they got off to a really nice start, a couple weeks into the season, and and they're kind of back to being what they've frankly been. And you just I mean, what, look, they're a small market team, so that goes without saying, but what's their plan? And they got yeah. skeins, and that's great, but how are they really going to compete? And they either, because they're not in like a full blown rebuild either. And they're kind of in this weird middling state. So, like, you skeins, have, there's butts guys the there. You know, that's the thing. Like, there's guys on that roster. Like, you have O'Neill Cruz, who, you know, you can debate whether he can stay healthy or not. But like, there's some, there's like pieces to to place there, and it's just, are they willing to go out and do more? I think is is the question. Which their history, no, they're not. Well, you thought maybe that they would trade Brian Reynolds last year, ended up giving him an extension, which was kind of surprising. And you know, they brought back Andrew McCutcheon, which is nice, and he did it a homer today. But like, they, I don't know. I kind of just felt like they'd be farther along at this point, given where they've been. So, you know, look, you have, a, you have a great ace to build around. They were able to get, how many years did they get of Garrett Cole legitimately? Like four or five years before he, they sent him off to Houston, I think. So is that what it's going to be for Skeens? Four or five good seasons and then ship him off to a big market team? Yeah. And uh, the Astros are climb, trying to climb out of the cellar right now. I mean, it seems like maybe the Angels are just really – pining hard for the last, last spot on in the West. Um, the athletics just hanging around, hanging around. I love just like our weekly athletics update, um, hanging around. Uh, I think that's where we're going to wrap up. There's not really much to talk about. Uh, again, if you did not hear me at the beginning, we will not be doing shows for the next six weeks. So June 26th, we will be coming back um, and we'll do maybe a big, big baseball episode. Um, but as we're going to Wednesday releases once a week episodes again, um, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, check out the chaotically intolerant table tennis league. We're going to have a lot of fun. Um, uh, preseason starts this week. So no, no live streams, but then next week live stream start season starts and we'll be ready to go. Um, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you on June 26th.